Well, hi guys. Welcome to Pure Prison. I'm, I'm actually um, on my personal. So, <laughs> um, okay. So tonight, I actually um, am curious. Uh, I want to start a conversation with you guys. I have been doing a lot of digging, and I'm really hoping that this is live. Let me let me ask somebody. Hold on. Is this live? <laughs> we'll try. I'm trying to do this for the first time, and I don't know if it if I'm doing it right. Okay, so basically, um, I started watching the movie The Thirteenth, and that's not spelled out. It's thirteen, the number. Okay, so The Thirteenth. This movie was absolutely great. Ah, we are alive, just okay. Uh, it was great. It was deep. It was interesting it was what's a good word? heart wrenching i couldn't believe the things that i was hearing and combined with all of the the other things and guys <laughs> forgive me backdrop i can't get it i will soon um this movie was intense so i suggest that everybody go to youtube that's where i found it and check it out if you're interested uh, if you have somebody that's incarcerated right now, if you've ever been incarcerated and you've never seen this movie, it's going to like just slap you around um, really hard. Uh, hold on just a second. So, um, the thing that I wanted to bring out is a company called Unicor. When I was searching, there was something called Alec, and I'm not going to bother to explain it right now. You just need to see the movie or check it out. It's capital A-L-E-C. What it is, is it's a ton of corporations that get together um, secretly, sort of, and they start making laws, um, passing things that just sometimes seem not in the best interest of, well, society or our loved ones or whatever the case may be. Anyway, check it out. This company, I don't know why they stuck out. They just did. I, they were going to get picked on. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> That's who I was going to pick on. I was going to tear them a new one tonight. Um, and I, I, who knows? Hi, guys. Um, okay, so I pulled up their website very quickly because I was in a rant. I was in one of those moods where I was just going to kick some, you know, what? I was ready. I don't know why. I don't know what, what happened that morning. Anyway, I was ready for him. So I go to the website, and the first thing I see all the way over to the uh, right-hand side at the bottom was uh, something about if you've had an inmate. I've got it over here. Hold on. If you've had an inmate work for us before, um, this is where you get information. So, of course, my smart little bit. I, I, t I, t I, you know, I wrote. I said, well, yeah, I, I've, got, I've got questions. I've got lots of them. Um, I'm just curious, you know, um, and I told him who I was or on the, on the information thing. And um, they actually got back to me uh, with way before the amount of time that it says that they're allotted or that they take to get back to you. Okay. So I was dumbfounded. So I started digging and off rip, I... I, I collaborated some questions with some people that I really respect. Hi, Andre. Hi, James. Um, so I started to collaborate with them and, and, and think of some questions that I would ask any corporation um, uh, that was doing this, that was involved in this this program of making laws and, and, and doing things secretly. And All right, let me get on. So anyway, I thought of some questions. The more I dug, the more I found out, and I started to to look at this this company in depth. Now, you have to understand first of all that this is a federal company. We're talking about federal, not state. Um, we're in, we're in Florida uh, right now. I don't know if everybody knows that, but welcome to sunny Fort Lauderdale. Um, okay, so this company has right now something in Coleman. Now these are the cities. Okay. I, I honestly, I did not get a chance to look to see if, um, because I don't, hopefully I'll be able to get some contacts in these federal prison guys. <laughs> okay. Coleman, Eglin, 
Mariana, Miami, and Tallahassee. Okay, those are the ones that are in Florida. When you go to their about page, when I tell you, my God, they've got a ton. They've got a ton. Hi, Jamie. So they've got them in Western, U.S., North, Central, Southeast, Mid Atlantic. Well, they're everywhere. Okay. So Alec, uh, somebody just, yes, if you're looking, somebody just posted exactly what Alec is and I'm trying to pull it up right now. I can't even see it. Uh, there's special interest groups, basically, who gave legislation a particular proposal that guarantees mass incarceration uh, by enforcing laws. I can't read anymore, and I don't know where or why I am not. Give me a second, guys, and let me see if maybe I can find myself. I don't know. I can't, I can't see anybody typing except where I am. Okay. I'm so sorry. So we're going to go on. So they're everywhere, right? And they make all kinds of stuff. They they do shoes. They do uh, the booties, like for, you know, nurses and things like that. Check it out. So I'm, I'm looking and I'm looking and I'm trying to think of what do you do for the community? Now, m most of the time when I look at something like this, I'm looking at the dynamic that's behind it. And I had to write down all my notes, guys. So the, di the dynamic behind it, and I all the time call it free labor. Now, in federal prisons, from my understanding, they get paid. What? I don't, I don't know. So we're going to go with labor for right now. But the dynamic behind it. Now, is it to set up re rehabilitation and re-entry? For the incarcerated, is it is it something that's hopeful, or is it to make a profit? Okay, and that that's why I just I don't know I just, I just started nitpicking, so I started digging, and I started looking. Now these people on their website, it's absolutely, it's very informative. Now, mind you, having been incarcerated and seeing DOC's website. Yes, I'm calling y'all out right now. I normally, you know, I, I call out and I also give applause. If what is, if this is true on the website, it's it's really, they do a lot, it seems. I, I really would like some input and I'm so upset that I can't do this live. So I'm just going to talk for a while and I'm just going to inform you. Please hit me up on our email at www, or excuse me, our website, www.pureprison.com. Okay, our email is there. If you have a friend, by the way, or a family member in the federal uh, institution in any of those, Coleman, Eglin, Mariana, Miami, Tallahassee, if you have anybody there and they know about unicor.gov, I'd be interested in hearing what they have to say and their perspective. Because I'm not them, and I've, I mean, I, I gave free labor. I, I mean, I, I was paying my debt to society, yes. But, you know, there's a lot of times that in the states, and especially in the state of Florida, you, and I know a couple other states, Louisiana, don't make me start naming them. Anyway, I felt like it was free labor. So, but the thing is, is are you trying to make a profit or not? Are you helping your communities? Are you helping the social fabric? Are you helping mend things? Now, if... What they say that they are doing. Uh, let me just tell you a little. Let me just get my thing right over here. Um, basically, uh, this is a, a government-funded company. Okay, uh, it does not affect the tax dollars, and what their impact is is oh, and they're green. If that matters to anybody, I know I don't know if I have any green people out there, but they have what they call FPI, the Federal Prison Inmate Programs, I guess. And basically what they do is they talk about society and they talk about recidivism and they talk about social issues like re-entry and things that are needed. Now, um, they really on their website start to target Okay, now, I just had an awesome question, and the question was, does Unicor back up their claims on how 
They help society with data that proves their claims. Okay, and this is what this is about, guys. And thank you so much, James, for um, asking that question. This is the discussion. This is the topic of the day. I need your feedback because they did reach back out to me. They told me that I was able to ask questions and that they would reply. So that is a fantastic question. And it was one of the questions that we had. Um, that when we collaborated, I'm just going to put out some of the questions that we came up with. Um, by using a mate labor, is it to profit as a business? Um, and how is this helping the inmate, their families and society as a whole? Now we kind of, I just went over that one and we're going to round back to that. Now, do you give back to the community? And if so, what organizations help you fund to prevent the recidivism rate? Now, that one is one that, um, I, I was digging into, and it seems that the recidivism rate they're very well aware of, and that by giving a trade to these gentlemen uh, and ladies that are in the uh, federal corrections institution, that that is how they are giving back. Now, as far as the community, we're going to flip on down here, over here. Now, it says to the private sector business, by the way, uh... Hold on a second, private sector. Nearly half of these purchases were from, never mind, that doesn't matter. Let's go on. MA training. Uh, okay, MA training, basically, they don't really offer that. It's just what they tr they give you as a trade. They do offer some kind of employment specialist training for the, the federal inmates who have left the there. Um, they help them find a job. And they have that website listed here. Uh, they have those in place for training the offender job training and placement programs uh, and technical assistance also for, and local training. Now, the thing that I found interesting about this, they do mock job fairs. What's up? Now, the only time that a mock job fair was ever done for me, my friends, in the state of Florida happened to be at Bradenton Bridges, it was cognitive therapy. I always rock on about Bradenton Bridges uh, or the Bridges program uh, for men and women that got defunded. Thank you, uh, Governor Scott. Uh, yeah, you defunded all of the programs for substance abuse and rehabilitation, but we're that's for another. <laughs> Hi, thank you for the heart. That's for another time. We'll, we'll we'll deal with that later. Sorry, I just dropped my notes. I got so excited. I got to bend over and. Back. Okay, so anyway, that's when I got my job. Now, mind you, I have worked in corporate industries and, and things like that, but there are many who have never even had a job their entire life, ever. Now, this is what we're sending back into society. Now, I was grateful and blessed enough to be able to go there prior to uh, a work release program. Um, in fact, I was the last graduating class there. Um, before they defunded it and sent back to prison for four months until I could get a place in work release. Um, so mock job fairs, that's kind of important. You'd think that possibly we might be doing some classes like that in other places like the state penitentiary, correctional institutions here in Florida uh, and other states. Why are we not doing this? Okay, so anyway, they part they participate in a program um, that gives very meaningf meaningful experience to job interview skills, filling out applications. Do you know how many people don't know about that? What about that box? The, the box. And we will get to that one too, folks. Uh, I'd love to hear comments about that, how that affects felons, how that affects the fabric of society, the box. Okay. Nice. Uh, another fantastic question. Why can't the new governor reinstall the Bridges Reentry Program? Well, we will be getting to that. And I will tell you why I want to get to that. Bradenton Bridges and cognitive therapy behavior gave me a chance to peel back parts of my life that I'd never gotten a chance to peel back. And mind you, it does happen inside of DOC. But it did happen in an environment, even though I was still an inmate, that made it easier to deal with and easier to open up about. Um, 
it was a freeing experience. It was liberating. It was empowering to free my mind. And, and let's just learn that little tiny word. Anyway, we're going to, I don't know. We're going to find out. Because it needs to be back in place. And this is why. So let's go on. Mock job fairs. Okay, next. Employing XM Fenders. A chance to earn a paycheck provides hope. Hope. And the prospects for reentry success. The newly released federal offenders. Hi, Christopher. What's up? I love you. Okay, so they actually employ. Now, that is something I'm going to get to if we have time that's something that we're gonna have somebody address that's gonna be a delegation that I'm gonna hand out to somebody and we're gonna find out about who employs ex-offenders what about that box we're gonna round back around to that because these are the things that are affecting us as a society okay so they do a service uh, for the public uh, they help former offenders in their transition um, to be contributing members of society. Listen, man, every single time I clicked on one of their buttons, I was, if it's true, hoorah. Kudos to you, Unicorn, if it's true. Now, we're going to find out from some federal inmates because hopefully we'll be getting some responses from this, okay, and, and find out their side of it. Um, now, the other thing is, oh yes, okay, the bonding program. We all know about that. Um, they have a fantastic place for um, employment resource center guide. Okay, so I want to know if this entire thing right here is just for public opinion. And that's the reason that I'm asking you to get involved because... Um, if they're at all these five places that I looked up in Florida and, and your family member might be working from them, is this, is this fake? Is this uh, only for their bottom line? And I want to know. And I'd like to know kind of soon because this gentleman told me that, uh, oh, this is a good one. Oh, this is about data again. Okay. Do you have data that can be used to show how you have helped or hurt the recidivism rate? I kind of think that that was kind of like that. And you guys, we did something that was pretty cool the other day. We posted uh, some information about something called the commons. And the commons is nothing but data, real data across the board, across the United States. They're already implementing it in some, some states. Um, check that out. There's a lot going on, guys out there happening to your loved ones, my friends, um, and I want to talk about it, and I really want you guys to help me, because we need to start doing this as a whole, and I'm going to close with this, okay, so this is what is posted by them on their website, and I'm going to read it to you, okay, a special message to our loyal customers and supporters. June 23rd. Now, this was in 2019, so I'm kind of wondering, and that's going to be one of my questions, what has occurred between 19 and 2021, especially with COVID? Okay. Uh, yuck, yuck, yuck. Uh, your business has literally benefited thousands. Looking back upon the many constituencies Unicorn serves, immeasurably contributions, have, immeasurable, excuse me, contributions have been made all without added cost to taxpayers. Towards the safety and security of federal corrections facilities while providing a wide range of products and services for the government's use. Okay, Unicor job training opportunities and meaningful work experience continue to better prepare federal offenders for a promising future as law-abiding, tax-paying citizens following their release from prison. And this is what really struck me. Yes. Okay. Good question. Can you ask Unicor whether they support tough on crime policies or policies that in mass incarceration? Holy slap somebody in the face with that one. Okay. That is a fantastic question. Um, and the reason, hi Lisa, the reason that that's, uh, a big deal, okay, is because when you research this and you go into Alec and you find out the big corporations, Keefe, 
uh, Unicorn. There's all kinds of them. Now, there's plenty that have backed out. I mean, they are multitude. You would be shocked. And they're all the people who supply the canteen, for the love of God. People, look it up. Anyway, the thing is, if you are t right now pushing and have been pushing tough on crime policies, what do you think that that's doing? Tough on crime policies are what? Giving longer sentences and in some cases, in a lot of cases, lengthier sentences that they should not be imposed that way. And that's what tough on crime policy has done for the United States. And I really don't think anybody can uh, that's into this can say anything different because that's exactly what it's done. Uh, so my thing is, and along with that is, do you do that uh, or, or are you with policies that end mass incarceration? I hope I said that right. If I didn't, I apologize. Okay, so this is what really, really struck me and resonated with me. Um, because it's something that I believe in and I know the people that I am associated believe in. And this is the sentence I want you to hear. A crime can take just moments to commit. But its ripple effect can last a lifetime and impact many. What? Can, can I say it louder for the people in the back? Just in case you're one of those tough on crime people. A crime, and by the way, let's just, if you are, let's talk about your nieces and your nephews and your grandkids. Let's put, now, imagine them being 16, 15, 18 and committing a crime. A crime can just take moments to commit. But its ripple effect can last a lifetime and impact many. Kudos, unicorn. If if that is what you believe and the and the following what they talk about, the victim in fact, let me just read it very quickly. I'm sorry. Restitution is a key component of our criminal justice system, and without work opportunities, inmates will be hard pressed to compensate victims of crime help support their families back home, or pay court-ordered fines. Amen. Because if it weren't for work release, and thank you, because we, we're, 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 where gratitude is due and where a light should be shined, I'm going to shine it. Thank you for affording some of us to a, a, a mere few, but thank you for the beds that you do have available, DOC, because we sure do appreciate it, because I know that I couldn't have paid mine off or made a dent. Are you kidding me? Not without that. Mm -mm, I needed that year of work, but whatever. Okay. So anyway, inmates who work in Unicor factories contribute as much as half their earnings to meet these outstanding financial obligations. Okay. Yada, yada, yada. Go on to Florida. It's about 65, or actually 85%. If all this is true, good job. But my next question is, why are we not implementing things like this in our state prisons? Why are we not Worried about our recidivism, right? Because everybody sits back and they talk about recidivism and recidivism. But you don't do anything about it. You don't do anything about that person that's getting out of prison. And they're living next door to you. And you're one of those tough on crime people. And you know what? Because they didn't have enough money to pay anything. They had to go back out and do whatever the heck they were doing before. Whether it be whatever hustle they had going. with. It. Okay. You stop. And you start listening. Stop talking and start listening. Yeah, yeah. Society, society first. Society-first.com. It shows, I, and it was coming whether y'all whether wanted it or not, it was going to come. It shows all of the effects that come from, from the ineffective corrections. But it also gives you a solution for every single one. And when I tell you, it's amazing. I, gosh, I wish every single one of you would go to societyfirst.com. Check it out. Get back to me. And get ready to read. But if you're not involved and you're not passionate about this, just don't. If you are you need to read it because you need to send your families there and they need to read it. And we all need to start bonding together and becoming 
the society that we are, whether we're felons, whether we're loved ones of felons, that we need to start gathering together and we need to start doing this and 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 making it aware to the public, to all those tough on crime people. And also, if you are the kind of person who has a loved one incarcerated and they're moving out and they're coming back into society and they're depending on you for a home and for a phone and for everything because they didn't get a chance to go to work release or they didn't get, let's get together. Go to society .for, uh, societyfirst.com and check it out. So let's round back around to unicorn. Yeah, unicorn. Ah, I'm sorry if you guys are watching from unicorn.gov. I apologize. And listen, my granddaughter got the unicorn stuck in my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. Okay. Check out their website. Get back to me with some questions. Uh, you got till Saturday. No. Sunday night. By Sunday night, because I'm going to email them out on Monday morning. I hope to hear from you. Check out our website also at www.pure-prison.com. Check out www.society-first.com. We are partnering together. We are trying to bring awareness. The fabric of society can be healed, y'all. It just needs rehabilitation and hope and programs. Programs like this for our loved ones. We can do it. I have faith in y'all. Listen, till next time. Look, we got some great podcasts coming up, by the way. I'm going to be promoting them um, this week. So I look forward to seeing each and every one of you. You guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate your feedback and look forward to hearing from y'all soon. Have a great night. Bye, y'all. Oh, remember, peace or pain. Every decision you make during your day is going to bring you one or the other. It's your decision.